with that, I'm going to go ahead and record. Uh, today, we're doing the new user webinar part two uh, session, uh, a deep dive on data, and I'm your facilitator, Brian Story. Our goal for today's session is that participants will be able to learn how to maximize assessments data in their daily classroom routine. Uh, within that, we're going to cover a few key topics. Uh, first is interpreting assessments data reports. Second is drawing conclusions from data reports. Uh, and then using assessments content for differentiated support. And then finally, uh, incorporating assessments into uh, your daily routines. Uh, some quick notes on webinar etiquette and Zoom behavior. Uh, so please stay muted. Uh, use the bottom, uh, the controls in the bottom left-hand corner of your Zoom window uh, to stay muted. You can feel free to share your video so that we can see who we're presenting to. Uh, and then feel free to use that chat feature in the bottom uh, center of your Zoom window to share any questions that come up. So as I said, I'm Brian Story. I'm a teacher engagement manager uh, with assessments. Uh, prior to this work, uh, I was a teacher for a decade in Washington, D.C. public schools and Norfolk public schools in Virginia. Uh, and very happy to join you today from uh, Durham, North Carolina. And with that, I'll turn it over to Dawn. Hi, everyone. My name is Dawn Peterson. If you attended New User Webinar 1, you may remember me from there. Um, I, uh, um, I taught eighth grade um, math for about 14 years in here in Massachusetts, and I used assessments for about 10 years. So I will be the chat moderator today. Feel free to post any questions or wonderings that you have as Brian is presenting. Excellent. Thank you, Dawn. So uh, just an overview of what assessments is, we are a forever free tool that allows teachers to enhance their curricula in a way that gives students immediate feedback on their progress and also gives teachers lots of actionable data that they can use. Uh, and we do seamlessly integrate with Google Classroom and Canvas uh, and thus uh, also support hybrid learning. Uh, uh, you know, we know that many different teachers are in different contexts and that uh, those contexts are very widely changing over the course of the school year. Uh, so we're definitely a tool that's flexible enough to meet those needs. So now that we've uh, done a brief overview of assessments, we're going to talk a bit about uh, interpreting assessments data reports. Uh, so typically we talk about assessments in terms of the four steps. Uh, step one is creating an assignment by selecting problems. Uh, and, and pushing that to Google or Canvas. Uh, step two is assisting students through immediate feedback as they answer their questions. Uh, step four is assessing class performance uh, based on your assignment report data. And then step uh, four is uh, analyzing answers together uh, based on the data that you receive. And so uh, this portion of the webinar is gonna focus mainly on assessing class performance. So we have two key reports, uh, many of you may have already noticed uh, in our platform, and they include the assignment report, which is sort of, uh, you know, it shows you your class-wide trends, uh, percent correct on assignments by class, student, and problem. And then there's a student details report. And that's where you can zoom into one student, show additional details, uh, amount of time spent, number of attempts, et cetera. You can always access your assignment report data by clicking the embedded link in the assignment, either on Google Classroom or on Canvas. And now what I'm gonna do is just go live uh, into a, a pre-populated report that we have just to overview uh, some of these uh, big ticket items around the assignment report. Uh, so in our assignment report here, I do wanna highlight one, fee uh, one set of new features that you may find interesting. Uh, so you'll see this actions drop down now in your uh, assignment reports. And if you use Google Classroom, uh, you can actually go ahead and upload scores to Google Classroom. Uh, we do not yet have that feature available in Canvas. Uh, we are working on it. Uh, but all teachers, Canvas or Google Classroom users, can download the report as a .csv file. So we now allow you to download that report as well. Uh, in the assignment report, you can hide and show student names, and that's going to hide their names and randomize their rows uh, if you want to share this data with students. Uh, each column represents uh, a particular question, and you can click those to see the student view. Uh, and then each row represents a student. Uh, but here at the top is uh, sort of uh, the main piece of data that most teachers will go to first. So you've got the problem average. Uh, you get the average score across the entire assignment, and then you get the average score for each problem. So that allows you uh, to determine which uh, questions were most challenging for students. 
uh, and then your common wrong answers, which are gonna show you uh, the percentage of students who answered incorrectly on the first try, uh, what they put. So if three or more students put the same wrong answer on their first attempt, uh, you will see that uh, the percentage of students who did that of those who answered incorrectly and also the answer that they put. Uh, so great fodder for discussions there. And then you've got your correct answer row, uh, which is, is sort of your answer key for the assignment. And keep in mind that you can hide all of this by clicking the arrow button next to student slash problem in the first column. Uh, so again, uh, you have some options there if you want to share data with students uh, to show or hide uh, uh, different elements. In addition, uh, and this is also great for you know, preparing for a student discussion or even taking a screenshot if you're working remotely and you want students to look at data, uh, you can use the sort arrows here to sort students according to their scores on overall on the assignment, on individual problems, uh, the amount of time spent, et cetera. Uh, so you have some options there. And then let's say uh, you know, you're taking a look at an individual student row and, um, and you're kind of curious about digging a little bit deeper to see what, you know, what happened for that student. Uh, you can click the triple dot next to their name and that'll show you the details report. And this details report is gonna give you that play-by-play, -play, uh, the amount of time spent on each attempt on each question. You can show the problems if you wanna reference what, uh, what you're looking at here. You can also shuffle between students on your roster in the class, or you can click the drop down uh, and select a student from there as well. In addition, let's say you look at that student details report uh, and you decide to do some reteaching with the student and you want to give them another opportunity to demonstrate uh, their knowledge on the assignment, you can always go back to that triple dot and click delete progress and that will allow the student to click the same uh, embedded link in Google Classroom or Canvas that they were already using, uh, but it'll start them at the beginning of the assignment and they'll be able to, uh, to, to redo it from there. So just to recap, uh, the assignment report is going to show you that whole class average score. It's going to show you the average score on pro individual problems. It's going to show you those common wrong answers, give you your answer key. Uh, you also have the option of downloading that report. And then uh, you'll also uh, notice the essay scoring column. So if you'd like to score essay responses, uh, as well, and I'll, I'll just go over here and show you that quickly. Anytime there's an open response, you can click essay scoring, and from here you can provide scores and comments for students. Uh, you can also hide and show these columns if you wanna prepare this for uh, viewing among the students. You can click show problem if you'd like to reference the problem they're responding to, um, and so on. Uh, one quick note about this, if you decide not uh, to score an open response, it does not affect the student score, uh, average score on the assignment. Uh, so it only changes their score if you provide a score. You'll also remember that triple dot where you can uh, access the student details report or delete progress, and then you can see the amount of time that each student spent on the assignment. In that details report, uh, again, you can uh, select students or shuffle through them using the navigation tools at the top of the report. Uh, you can see answers for each attempt that they made, the amount of time they spent on each attempt. And then you do also have the option, if you'd like, to score and comment on open responses directly from the screen. So uh, to get, I wanted to also give you a recap of the symbols uh, that you'll see in our report. Uh, the green check, it means that, you've, uh, that the student has gotten the question correct on the first attempt. Green X means that the student got the question correct on their second or third try. If it was the second try, they got a score of 67. On the third try, they get a score of 33. The red X means that the student still got the question correct, but it took them more than three attempts to do so. Uh, and that gives a score of zero. And then finally, if the student clicks show answer, that drops their score automatically to zero and they'll, they and you as the teacher will see a red highlighted X indicating something has gone wrong there. And I'll go ahead and pause here for any questions. Uh, Dawn, do we have any questions coming in? No, there's, there's no questions. And if anyone um, didn't see, I posted in the chat the new features, Brian, um, Brian mentioned about uploading scores to Google Classroom and then downloading reports. So um, if that went a little bit quick and you want more information on that, I shared that in the chat. Excellent, thank you for that, Dawn. 
And, uh, and again, feel free to uh, pose any questions if anything comes up as we go through the rest of the, uh, uh, the session today. So now that we spent uh, some time talking about the key elements of our reports and, and where to go to in the reports to find those elements, uh, we're going to talk about drawing conclusions from our, our data reports. And so with this, we're going to look at three scenarios. Uh, these are three common scenarios that you'll likely encounter as you use assessments and analyze data. Uh, and so in the first scenario, I'm just going to walk through the scenario uh, and talk about it and, and what conclusions we can draw. In the second scenario, I'm going to ask you to take a poll uh, just to see, uh, do a quick check for understanding and see where folks are. And then in the third scenario, I'm going to ask folks to share in the chat uh, where their thinking is uh, based on the scenario given. Uh, and so with that, we'll, have scenario, we'll start with scenario one. After teaching unit one, lesson one on scale drawings from seventh grade illustrative math, Mr. Thomas assigned the cool down to his students. That evening, he reviewed the resulting assignment report to help plan for his lesson the next day. And here's an, uh, a snapshot of the assignment report that he got. And so I'll give folks just a 30 seconds or so to take a look at this. Okay, so uh, in terms of what we notice about this data, uh, one student has several highlighted boxes uh, where it indicates that they used all of their hints and then required an answer or uh, required an answer. Uh, they only spent 31 seconds on the assignment in total. In terms of conclusions we can draw from this, uh, this student either needs more support to master scale drawings or they quote unquote gamed the assignment by pressing show answer without making thoughtful attempts on the questions. And in terms of next steps, uh, you may decide to uh, look at the student details report to see the play by play for what they did, uh, maybe even review uh, these data with students in a one with the student in a one on one conference. Uh, when we look at these data, uh, given that the students spent very little time on each question and requested lots of help, they clearly did not uh, make their best effort. Uh, in addition, because, uh, yeah, like, they, like I said, they spent 31 seconds. Uh, so you may decide to meet with the student, do some reteaching, uh, and then maybe delete progress and have them try again or assign something else to them specifically uh, based on the conversation that you have with them. All right, so scenario two. Uh, Miss Lee, a seventh grade math teacher, had students complete uh, five problem solving problems aligned to uh, understanding equivalent expressions in context to build their understanding of this common core standard during class time. Here's a uh, snapshot of the data from her data report, and I'll give folks uh, about 20 seconds or so just to take a look at this. Okay, so now that we've had a chance to look at the data, uh, I'm going to launch a poll uh, just to see uh, where folks, uh, where your thinking is and uh, see if there are any misunderstandings that I can uh, help address now. Uh, so with that, I am launching the poll and I'll give uh, folks about 60 seconds or so to respond. Uh, this is anonymous. We do appreciate everybody responding uh, uh, as, as you can uh, so that we have the most complete data possible. Excellent. I already see folks responding. Again, I appreciate that. We'll keep this open for about 30 more seconds. All 
All right, and I'll give about uh, 15 to 20 more seconds just as the rest of the folks are uh, recording their answers. Thanks again for responding. All righty. Uh, so I'll go ahead and share the results here. Uh, so for question one, uh, we asked which of the following noticings are accurate? Uh, and it looks like uh, everybody answered correctly on that question. That's wonderful. Most students scored poorly on two questions. Uh, question two, uh, what can you conclude from the common wrong answer for problem four? Uh, and I love asking this question because it's a great time to just norm on, on what these things in the report mean. Uh, and so it looks like uh, of those who responded, uh, about uh, a, th a third or 30% uh, chose the correct answer, which is that 67% of students who entered a wrong answer uh, put one third. So if we look here, uh, this 67% uh, uh, figure represents uh, all students who have answered incorrectly on their first attempt. So among those students who answered incorrectly, 67% uh, put the answer one third. Uh, so just wanted to clarify that. All righty. Uh, in terms of planning next steps, uh, you know, you may decide to pause classwork uh, to review low scoring problems with students, uh, paying particular attention to why those common wrong answers happened. Uh, you may also then uh, decide to assign additional problem solving questions on that standard as homework or as additional class practice so that students have a chance to get some, again, some more of that practice. All right, scenario three. Uh, after teaching uh, her Eureka math lesson, uh, third grade math teacher, Miss Ray, assigned practice problems from Eureka Math Module 5, Lesson 2, on fractions as numbers on the number line as independent practice. Her mastery threshold for this assignment is a score of 70%. And so I just want you to take a look at this snapshot of her data. And in the chat, uh, please uh, share any responses that you have uh, to our questions here. So what do you notice from this data and what conclusions can you draw from this data? And we do, uh, and I'll uh, emphasize, we do have a small group today, so we do appreciate anybody who's willing to share their thoughts here. Uh, Dawn is going to uh, share some of the responses as they come into the chat. Sure. Yeah, and some teachers have to hold back from thinking about what their action move is. <laughs> a lot of teachers go right to, what am I going to do to to support students? Mm -hmm. um, uh, one one teacher is asking, can you make it bigger? <laughs> I think that that's possible here, right, Brian? Um, but if you make it full screen, you should be able to uh, see that a little bit larger. Yeah, if you make your Zoom window full screen, you should be able to see it better. Uh, there's nothing I can do on our end to make the, the image itself uh, bigger right now. Yeah. Um, all right. So uh, one teacher um, says that several students have not met uh, the threshold, which in this case is 70%. Um, more specifically, three students did not meet the mastery um, level. Um, two students got all of the questions correct with 100%. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I would say, Brian, without seeing the rest of the report, you know, we, we can't really pull too much information. All we can say is how they did in general. Um, one right. teacher noted, and this is great to mention now, that it has been rearranged from highest to lowest and gives their final score. So using those, um, those column sorters are a great way to kind of figure out what students uh, you know, did get the 100% and what students may need a little bit additional support. Excellent. Uh, and yeah, that, th those responses were great. So uh, oftentimes uh, as teachers, especially when we're in the moment or uh, you know, we're rushing around trying to plan or differentiate a lesson, uh, we can have that tendency to just focus on the students uh, who experience the most challenge on an assignment, right? So we have those three students who are below the mastery threshold, but then it's also important to focus on uh, how do we provide additional enrichment or additional support or next steps uh, for those students who are at the top as well. Uh, so those are two super valuable observations. Uh, and yes, it's correct. You know, th this is very limited piece of data. Uh, so obviously when you're looking at your reports, you may look at uh, what's in the rest of the row or look at those student details to try to figure out more. 
Yeah, and Brian, one, one teacher just noted, one student is almost there. So taking a look at the, re the rest of the report is definitely going to give additional insight on that 67%. Is that a student who may need additional support or is that a student who, you know, can be bunched with the, uh, the 100 percenters? Absolutely. And so, yeah, the, uh, what we can notice is that three out of seven students receive scores below 70% on the problem set. Uh, we, can, we can then determine that a subgroup of three students need more support to master the standard. And then from there, uh, you know, teachers are going to think about next steps, right? Uh, so what are some next steps that a teacher could take to respond to this data? Uh, and I'll let uh, give folks, uh, folks a chance to respond in the chat and uh, Dawn will share any responses. And again, we appreciate anybody who's willing to share with us today. All right, small group intervention for reteach, review, or even enrichment. Absolutely. So you've got that reteacher review for our three students who uh, had a challenge, who were challenged by the assignment, uh, and then maybe providing some enrichment for those uh, for students five and six. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Anything Another else? teacher have a small group session with those students who are below the mastery level. Mm -hmm. um, peer the or pair the hundred percent students with the lower students to do some review remediation in groups. Um, Let's see, could look and see if there are any common wrong answers to see if you need to have a small group session with those particular students. Um, again, small group instructions based on the concept that is missed. Some great ideas. Yeah, those are all great. And thanks again uh, for those of y'all participating in the chat. Uh, we appreciate all the wonderful answers. Uh, so, so those are all uh, kind of centering around uh, the sort of same ideas, right? That, um, and, and I mean, it's also worth acknowledging that in your context, you may be working with students remotely, you may be physically in class with them. And so what this looks like and the next, next steps that you take are gonna be determined by what makes the most sense in the context that you're facing, right? Uh, obviously it's easier to pull students aside and do quick reteaching at home. Uh, maybe if you're on a Zoom chat with students virtually, uh, that looks like putting students in breakout rooms, uh, maybe putting some of those uh, lower scoring students with some of the higher scoring students in a breakout. So we really, you know, we don't prescribe to you how you have to use it. Uh, and that's especially important in this, uh, you know, in the COVID-19 context. Uh, but, you know, we definitely want you to be in the driver's seat to determine what's going to work best for you and your students. Uh, in terms of next steps, you, you, uh, let's say uh, students are in uh, math centers or independent work, you may decide, as many folks said in the chat, uh, to pull that small group of three students and reteach uh, and then delete progress and allow them to try again. Uh, you may decide to assign those students uh, a special additional set of problems uh, to demonstrate mastery after reteaching. So you have some different options that you can play around with there. With there. And I'll go ahead and pause here for any questions. Uh, give folks about 20 seconds or so to post any questions you might have in the chat. All right. Nothing coming in yet. Um, just a reminder to everyone that, you know, some people say there's so much content in, in our webinars. So just a reminder that this is being recorded. Both the slide deck and the recording will be shared um, later on this evening. So you'll have that to review. And we also, Brian's gonna talk about all the user resources on our website, but I'll, uh, I'll try to keep up and post those in the chat as, uh, as Brian refers to them. Excellent. Absolutely. Yes. Uh, we understand folks are, are busy and have lots of stuff, lots of things going on. Uh, so you will all get that follow up email with the deck and the recording for your reference. So now that we spent some time talking about uh, our, you know, the key pieces of our assignment reports, our data, uh, the common scenarios that you're probably going to come across as you're uh, analyzing data from students. Now we're going to talk about using assessments content for differentiated support. So uh, as will often happen, and as uh, you know, came up in, in the chat for the, some of the scenarios we were looking at, oftentimes it's gonna point you to a group of students uh, or a specific student who needs some additional practice. And so we have a variety of content that you can use for this purpose. Uh, we have our open educational resources, so Illustrative, Open Up, uh, Engage New York, Eureka, and Utah Middle School Math. Uh, so you can always go, uh, go to these for additional uh, problems to assign, uh, practice problems, et cetera, uh, based on what your students need. 
We also have our in-house built uh, problem solving sets. And these are standalone sets of practice problems, usually five. Uh, and they're organized according to Common Core and then specific standard. And those are just great go-to, uh, that's a great go-to folder uh, when you're assigning content, if you're just looking for some extra practice problems uh, to assign to students. Then we have our release date tests. So uh, we have some release date test items here. Uh, this is a great place for students to get a chance to practice and get familiar with the types of questions they might see on a standardized test uh, as a note. Uh, this is not, uh, we're not replicating the test experience here. Uh, students uh, will still be able to do, get multiple attempts and get feedback on their answers, but it is a good place you can go to get, to get some of that practice and build familiarity and fluency uh, among your students. And then finally, we have our in-house built uh, skill builders. Uh, these are uh, mastery based. So basically, uh, when a student goes in, they're randomly assigned questions from a specific standard. They have to get three correct in a row on their first try in order to demonstrate mastery. Uh, and these are organized the same way uh, as the problem solving sets. And so now what I'm going to do is just show you, uh, A, where you can find uh, these items when you're logged into assessments, and then we're going to do an overview of the Skill Builder report as well uh, for those of you who may not be familiar. And so if I go to assessments here and I log in, uh, you'll see the Skill Builders and Problem Solving Sets listed here uh, at the bottom of the list. When you click into these, you'll be able to see things sorted by, uh, items sorted by grade level first. When you click into the grade level, you'll see it uh, sorted by topic. And then uh, you'll see the standard is attached uh, to each one so you can see which standards are covered there. One important note here is that when you're assigning a skill builder, it's not gonna let you select problems because students are randomly assigned problems from, from this basically a very long set. Uh, so you'll basically, once you've selected just skill, the skill builder you want to assign, you'll then just click assign and proceed from there. In terms of the Skill Builder report, I'm just gonna pull one of those up. And here you can see the Skill Builder report. So you have some of the same options as the assignment report. Uh, for instance, you can hide student names and that'll randomize and hide those rows. Uh, you can also still use that actions drop down that I mentioned. Uh, again, the upload scores is only for Google Classroom, uh, but Google and Canvas teachers can download the report as a CSV file. You can also click here, and that's going to pull the report up in uh, the regular assignment report format so you can see which questions were answered by which students. This could be useful if, uh, you know, let's say you're trying to pair some students. You can see here student one really struggled with this question and student five got it correct on the first try. So that might be a good situation where you can pair those students uh, to, to sort of, uh, uh, to get student one up to speed. Uh, you can also see the amount of time spent on it and you can uh, still sort the rows as with the regular assignment report. The symbols are basically the same, uh, but you'll see here that uh, they appear for each question. Uh, so, uh, you can see here that this student answered incorrectly on their, uh, uh, on, uh, with uh, more than three attempts on every question, uh, and they reached a daily maximum of 10. So once a student gets to 10 questions, if they haven't answered three correct in a row, they have reached a daily maximum. However, uh, and that's usually because we recommend that, you know, for that student, they probably need some kind of intervention or reteaching. Uh, and so uh, you can always then reset that. Uh, if you'd like them to try again on the same day by clicking the triple dot and deleting their progress. Alrighty. And uh, so we will go ahead and move on from there. So again, it's going to show you each student attempt. Uh, it's going to show you the amount of time they spent. Uh, it'll show you when students get to that daily maximum. Uh, so you can either reteach or uh, and or reset their progress and let them try again. Those symbols that you saw, uh, the green check uh, in the box represents a student got, getting the question correct on the first attempt. That does count toward mastery. Uh, so that's, that would be one of the three uh, that they need to get in a row to demonstrate mastery. Uh, the green X here uh, means they were correct on the second or third attempt and that does not count toward mastery. And then finally, the red X means they got the question correct after three or more incorrect attempts, or they requested the answer, in which case that, does also, uh, that also does not count toward mastery. 
you may elect uh, to assign to individual students. So let's say you're looking at that data report, you identify a subgroup of students that you need to engage with some reteaching and you want to assign some problems afterwards so that they can demonstrate their knowledge after reteaching. Uh, whenever you assign to Google Classroom or Canvas, you can then go in and edit the assignment uh, and uh, assign it to just a subgroup. And I'll actually just go live over here and show you what that looks like. So on any assignment, you can click the triple dot, uh, click edit. And from here, you can click the four drop down in Google Classroom and select and deselect the students you would like to see that assignment. Uh, in Canvas, uh, you can do this by also clicking edit uh, on the assignment. And if you go down to the assign box, that's going to allow you to select individual students, or if you already have pre-organized subgroups of students, you can select those and they'll uh, be the ones that get the assignment. I'll go ahead and pause here for any questions. Dawn, do we have any questions coming in? No questions at all, Brian. You are doing a fantastic job, if I may say so myself. Oh, thank you so much, Dawn. Uh, if, the people if, with their cameras on are, are fascinated by watching your presentation. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Well, that's, that's, that's great to hear. Uh, I will I will take that as a as a compliment. Uh, but you know, again, feel free if any questions pop up or you have any wonderings as we go through the rest of the presentation, uh, you know, feel free to share those in the chat. We'll be happy to respond. Absolutely. All right, so uh, now that we've talked a bit about differentiation and how you can leverage assessments to support uh, you know, the different needs of students, uh, we're gonna talk about incorporating assessments data into your daily routine. And so there are some key questions that come up with really with any lesson or unit that you're planning, uh, but these are also relevant for assessments. Uh, when will you and your students most need formative data? When and how will you share assignment data with students? What will you tell students is the purpose of data and how it's being used? And then the, uh, a question that's very much top of mind for, uh, for, for teachers right now, uh, how will you leverage assessments data and content to support distance learning? And so uh, in terms of when you will need, uh, you know, you and your students will need formative data, that's gonna look different for every teacher. We have a few suggestions listed here, uh, but we definitely uh, recommend, especially if you're just getting started with a new class, you know, think about what's that one area in the lesson? Is it your warm up, your exit ticket, maybe independent practice, where uh, you could really increase the value of the experience for you and students if, if you're both getting quick data uh, on student progress. In terms of uh, when and how you'll share assignment data, uh, as you saw in our scenarios and that we talked about, uh, it may make sense to share data with the whole group, uh, a subgroup, uh, an individual student. Uh, you may even decide to use uh, report data or that details report for a parent conference. Uh, so you have several different options there at your disposal depending on uh, what's needed for students and families. In terms of the purpose of data and how it's being used, uh, we definitely recommend being clear that uh, our data is uh, formative, so it's to help them improve, uh, and that we generate scores. Uh, if you do decide to count uh, a score as a grade, we just recommend that you share that ahead of time with students so they know what to expect. But we are a formative tool. The idea is that students get a chance to really practice and, uh, and experience sort of uh, getting questions correct and incorrect and getting comfortable with that and being okay with that process. As we know, uh, many times with students, the challenge is not, uh, you know, are they, uh, you know, are they willing to be correct? It's like, are they willing to be uh, incorrect on a problem or, or in a situation and then move on from there productively, right? Uh, we recommend that you explain why data is useful to both you and the students and also how the data is informing your instruction. So if you're sharing data, uh, you know, or you're moving on to an activity that's based on data that you found, you know, that you found in an assignment report, you know, share that with the students. Uh, say, well, based on uh, these common wrong answers that you experienced, we're going to do, I'm going to do some reteaching with you, and then we're going to do some additional practice. Ground those elements of the lesson uh, where possible in the data that you've used to establish, you know, what's happening. And then in terms of leveraging your LMS, uh, you can create assignment groups either in Canvas or Google Classroom uh, by relevance, unit, or assignment type. We know different teachers do different things uh, with organizing assignments. Uh, you can add instructions and videos to your assignments. 
Uh, and you can also post a question in the Google Classroom chat uh, or create a group discussion in Canvas that links uh, to a specific uh, assessments assignment. Uh, and in this uh, slide deck, we've linked our two uh, tutorial videos here on how to uh, maximize Google and Canvas uh, with assessments if you'd like to dig a little bit deeper on what that looks like. All right, I'll pause again for any questions. Dawn, do we have any questions coming in? No questions, just one person saying how wonderful you are at, uh, at the presentation. <laughs> Pat yourself on the back. <laughs> if if y'all could see, my, if I had a full body uh, cam happening right now, I'd take a bow, but all you can see is my face and my head. So uh, <laughs> it's like a bow. Uh, I appreciate that. And to be fair, I've had lots of practice. You know, we've delivered yeah. these webinars to thousands of teachers uh, since, this, you know, since the summer and the spring. So uh, I've definitely had a, a chance to get, uh, to get good at delivering. <laughs> for sure. Um, all right, so we're going to move up to uh, move on to sort of our wrap up recap next steps. Uh, today we learned how to understand the key elements of our data reports and normed on what are those key uh, pieces of data that you'll find most useful in your everyday practice. Uh, how to draw conclusions from data reports uh, and use those to plan instruction. Uh, and we did that by looking at some of those common scenarios that you'll encounter as an assistance teacher. Uh, using assessments content to provide differentiated support. So we know different students have different needs and it's important you be able to address those. Uh, and then planning for incorporating assessments data into your daily routine. Uh, again, what's that high leverage area, that one place uh, in your lesson, uh, especially if you're getting started with a class where getting this data for yourself and students getting immediate feedback might have the greatest impact. Uh, at this time, Dawn is going to post a link to our uh, feedback survey in the chat. Uh, we really do appreciate you sharing your thoughts here, and it's actually supposed to say November web or no web webinars one, so that's my apologies. But Dawn is going to put uh, the correct one in the chat, uh, and I'm real. <laughs> I could have sworn Dawn, and we talked about this earlier. Uh, I checked this slide to make sure it was updated, and for whatever reason, it is not. So my apologies, or my apologies, but it should be. Uh, 11 10 2020 and Dawn is like I said is going to put the link to the survey in the chat and today's session is the new user webinar part two a deep dive on data in terms of upcoming webinar sessions uh, if you're interested we have several drop-in help sessions coming up through the end of the year here uh, we're also really excited about our upcoming uh, targeted webinar on exploring different blended instructional models using assessments uh, featuring experienced users. And so that's coming up this coming week. If you're interested, definitely uh, sign up for that. We also have our help center, uh, our blog page, and our teacher corner. And I'm just going to go live over here and, and show you those. So in our help center here, you can see we've got our user resources, frequently asked questions, uh, a library of our webinar recordings, uh, a place for you to sign up for upcoming webinars. On our user resources page, uh, we have the various resources we offer sorted by different topics uh, to, for ease of navigation there. And so you can feel free to check those out. Uh, our blog is here, and so you can click that to check out different perspectives from assessment stakeholders, teachers, et cetera, internal staff uh, on how assessments works and uh, how it's useful. Uh, and then our teacher corner, uh, where you can go to see uh, various teacher-generated uh, artifacts, uh, writings, uh, demos, things like that, that have been uh, completed by assessments teachers. We also have our Facebook uh, user community, uh, and if Dawn wants to share a link to that in the chat as well, we definitely recommend uh, that you check that out because we have teachers of a variety of experience levels uh, and assessments experts and novices sort of all coming together, uh, discussing, answering questions. Uh, I know that Dawn posts a lot of really interesting uh, tips and useful information and prompts in the Facebook group, so definitely check that out. Uh, all users get our monthly newsletter, so be on the uh, uh, keep an eye out for that as well, where we share uh, updates and useful uh, useful tips. Uh, you can also connect with us on other social media, such as Twitter and LinkedIn. Uh, and if you have any questions uh, after today's session or in general, you can feel free to reach out to us at contact at uh, and we'll be happy to answer any questions that you have. 
And at this time, before we wrap up completely, and as folks are kind of finishing, uh, or maybe you have finished the feedback survey, uh, it would be great if folks could just uh, share their biggest takeaway from today's session. What was the, uh, the most important thing that stood out to you from what we learned today? And if you could share that in the chat, uh, Dawn will share out a few uh, responses. Uh, and again, we appreciate anybody uh, sharing their thoughts with us today. We do have a small group, so but we've had uh, a very participative group. So y'all have made the difference in terms of the quality of the session. Uh, so we do appreciate that. Absolutely. And uh, Brian, I looked ahead on your slide deck and the next slide uh, does have the correct information about the, uh, <laughs> about the survey. <laughs> you have two That's what I did. I, I, <laughs> I, I forgot that there were uh, that there were two uh, two prompts for that slide, and I only uh, fixed the second one. So yeah. well, there you go. That's okay. Well, as as teachers do every single day and every single hour of every weekday, we will we will adjust and and move yeah. forward accordingly. <laughs> All right, so a couple uh, couple ideas are coming in. Um, first, being able to use data to inform my instruction. Absolutely, 100%. I think that's the, the strongest piece that um, assessments offers. Um, I love how the data is organized. Um, using the delete progress um, was new to, to this teacher. And um, also the skill builder options. People are learning something new, regardless of how experienced that you are. Um, using the data to help struggling students. Oh, it's coming in so fast now. Everyone's so excited. Yeah. Um, uh, people are noting that um, they appreciate the examples of situations and how to look at the data and what are the possible ways to help students. So walking through those scenarios was really helpful. Mm -hmm. um, let's see, someone mentioned they haven't used the student details report. Um, yet, but they will um, after learning about them today. Um, also, they didn't realize they can download the reports, both fantastic features. And again, that's that's a new feature that we just released a week or two ago. Mm -hmm. Excellent. And yeah, you know, one of the main reasons why we wanted to plan a session like this that was more of a deeper dive on data, right, is uh, because, you know, teachers may really like assessments, they like the content variety that kids get immediate feedback, but it's easy, you know, when you're going in the, uh, through your day to day and you've got lots of stuff going on, uh, to not uh, necessarily leverage uh, the data that you get as a result, uh, you know, in the most meaningful and useful way or be able to look at that data and quickly identify what's most important. And so that's what basically the this session is to sort of help you figure out like in those rushed moments when you're super busy and you just need to draw some conclusions from data uh, what you can look at uh, and and what some of those common scenarios are um, so we appreciate y'all sharing in the chat and again for being such a participating uh, high participation group today yeah, and I'll just mention, Brian, I'll, I'll throw in one last pitch for next week's um, targeted webinar. So if you found today super helpful, if you're new or experienced, um, next week's targeted webinar, it's going to be Wednesday, 3.30 Eastern time. Uh, and it's going to be uh, teachers sharing uh, different instructional models that they use assistance with. And there's also a presentation from, uh, from the team at Modern Classroom. Excellent. Thank you. And Dawn, if you could just share the link to the survey, uh, feedback survey one more time in the chat. Again, uh, today's session is on uh, the 10th of November and it's the new user webinar part two, a deep dive on data. We appreciate any feedback uh, you can leave us. Uh, we do take that feedback and, and use it to plan our future professional learning and improve the offerings that we already have. Uh, so we, again, we do appreciate any feedback you can offer us on today's session. And with that, uh, again, if you know the session ends and you have any questions that didn't occur to you during the session, you can feel free to reach out to us at contact.assistments.org uh, and we'll be happy to provide any further assistance you might need. Uh, and with that, I'll give folks about 20 more seconds or so uh, if they wanna post any additional questions in the chat uh, and then we will close out. All right, getting some thank yous, Brian. So no questions coming in. All right. Well, again, thank you uh, for taking the time to join us today. I'm sure it's, a, it's been a very busy day. So thanks for joining us and learning a little bit more about assessments. We hope this was helpful to you. Uh, and we also hope that uh, you have a good rest of your day and rest of the week and appreciate all that you do uh, to support your communities, the students you teach and their families, uh, and what's obviously a very challenging and dynamic time. 
Uh, so thanks again for joining. Bye, everyone.